action. Thanks, Ray, for that really good segue. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to go and do two different sets of sessions over the course of the last two days. My first day focused on financial aid, delivery, uh, and all of the servicing, the updates from the federal loan servicers, as well as the updates on the various different financial literacy and repayment options. One of the takeaways that I came away with was basically redundant. Uh, and that is the continued focus of the department, similar to what we witnessed and what we reported on last year from Orlando, Florida, at last year's Department of Ed conference, was the emphasis and the focus that the department and its servicers and its subcontractors are placing on financial literacy, borrowing, the responsibilities of the borrowers, and what the repayment options are that we have to deliver and describe to those borrowers, and the ways in which that is coming through in terms of default aversion and the push for programs like income-based repayment and pay-as-you-go and pay-as-you-earn. In the course of my, disc in my tracking of yesterday, uh, it became very evident yet again that the department really hopes that the institutions will spend a great deal of time focused on using all of the tools that are available to them through social media and through a lot of the new developments that the department has put together on various websites. Uh, the negative side is there continues to be an ongoing discussion and an ongoing undercurrent of frustration on the part of institutions across all spectrums of the higher education continuum with the transition to 100% direct loans and some of the concerns that still exist with the adequacy of the servicing and what needs to be done to ensure that institutions and students, more importantly, are not overly penalized because of the transition and because of what has taken place with the conversion to 100% direct loans. On the positive side, once again, they continued to focus on financial literacy. There were two sessions that focused almost exclusively on unique ways in which key institutions have been focused on promoting additional financial literacy, outlining and listing a, a plethora of different ways in which they are directing students, most notably through peer-to-peer -peer contact, but also through a number of other different mechanisms in order to try and promote financial literacy with the whole goal being to make sure that students are aware of what their borrowing responsibilities are, what their repayment responsibilities are, and on the front end, the budgeting so that they understand from beginning to end that financial literacy includes those three key components. Most of today I spent dealing with National Direct Student Loan Database Systems. The NSLDS is another prominent, prominent uh, part of this conference this time around. They have spent a great deal of time focusing on the updates and the changes and the revisions to NSLDS. The biggest takeaways in, those, in that area comes down to, I think, two things. One is enrollment. They are spending a great deal of time focused on the student cohorts and how to track all of the student cohorts and all of the unique new bells and whistles they put into the system to be able to more effectively attract enrollment and, tra tra and track the student's matriculation through their entire eligibility for higher education. Why is this important? The department and through the secretary and through the administration are placing a greater emphasis on the desire to be able to track an individual student throughout their higher education continuum. That includes focusing on transfers and TMS systems within the NSLDS system but also simply on just the ability to have accurate information on students from enrollment all the way through the process. A key takeaway from this that I urge you to consider, and I heard no less than seven times in four different presentations, was an urgence on behalf of the department, if you use a third-party servicer, to ensure that that third-party servicer is doing an effective job in helping you as an institution keep the information on your students current. They reminded the, the constituencies in all of those sessions that while it may be the third party servicer that you think is making sure that the information on certification, where the student is, any changes to the student certification or where they are in their education process is being done by the third party servicer, but they made it very clear the ultimate responsibility and the ultimate liability resides with you, the institution. There are portions of NSLDS that have now been built in that we'll talk about and we'll summarize uh, with follow-up that we do in writing, along with the PowerPoints, that direct the institution to specific areas within SLDS where you can track how effectively your third-party servicer is doing on and keeping that information as current as possible as well. But it was emphasized time and time again 
that regardless of whether it's the third party servicer or you the institution, that they really are placing a premium on enrollment. The last thing that I would mention uh, is a focus that they had as well on the desire to make sure that as much information is kept current as possible as you go through the use of NSLDS, aggregate information that drives median loan debt, again for the college scorecard as well as for other things, are all part of what they emphasized throughout the course of NSLDS today. In conclusion, as Ray said earlier, we will be putting all of this together in a separate set of documents that we send out to you. Uh, it will include takeaways in written form, along with hyperlinks directly to the PowerPoint presentations from the different tracks and the different sessions that we attended. We will also be doing one final wrap-up for the next two days of the conference on Friday and hope that you will join us to hear the second half of our report on the FSA conference of 2013. Thank you.